Welcome to Electron Online. Our next example is two hanging masses being pulled up by a single force. The masses are connected by a string and the tension in the, between the two we can call T. Notice if we solve the problem using a single system, in other words we think of it as a single system and we're only considering forces acting on the system from the outside, there's only three forces. We have the force pulling up, the weight on the first mass, and the weight or the force of gravity on the second mass. If we then use the equation F net equals the total mass times acceleration, and we solve that equation for the acceleration, we get the ratio of the net force divided by the total mass. If we assume that the acceleration will be upward, and of course if we're correct, the acceleration will be positive, then we can say that F is A in the acceleration and the two weights, the two forces of gravity on the two masses are opposing the acceleration. So the net force is F minus M1G minus M2G and the total mass is M1 plus M2 and that gives you your acceleration. If you now want to solve the same problem using free body diagrams, we then draw the two masses separately and we consider all the forces acting on the first mass and all the forces acting on the second mass, which in this case also includes the tension of the string. In the case of M1, the tension is downward because relative to M1, tension pulls down, and for M2, relative to M2, the tension is upward because the tension pulls on M2. So we use the equations F net equals MA for the first one. Again, we assume the accelerations are going to be in the upward direction. So the force pulling up minus the two forces pulling down equals the mass times acceleration. In this case, the force pulling up minus the force pulling down equals the mass times acceleration. Notice the two equations have the two unknowns, the tension and the acceleration, and we're looking for the acceleration. So we're going to solve each of those equations for the tension and then set the two equations equal to each other. So the first one, we move the T over to the right side, M1A to the left side, and we switch the equation around. We get T is equal to F minus M1G. And when we bring this across, it becomes minus M1A. On this equation, we move this to the right side. We get T is equal to M2A plus M2G. Now we set the two equations equal to each other, so we can say that F plus M2G. I'm going to move all the terms that have an A in it to the left, everything else to the right. So we have minus M1A minus M2A is equal to, on the right side we have M2G, and then we move the M1G across, so we get, that would be plus M1G, and move the F across, it becomes minus F. And then, looks, we want to have positive everywhere, so we're going to change all the signs. So now we come up here. <clears throat> so we have um, M1A plus M2A is equal to, we have minus M2G minus M1G and plus F. So we just simply change all the signs, so we have a positive A on the, on the left side. Now we factor out an A, we have A times plus F. And then finally we have A equals, and I'll put the F in front, the force by which we apply minus plus M2. And notice we have the exact same equation as we got over here. Now when we plug in all the numbers that we know, this becomes equal to, that's 500 minus M1, which is 10, times 9.8, minus 20, times 9.8, and divide by the total mass of 10 plus 20. And that becomes equal to 6.87 meters per second squared. And so here's our acceleration. As so you can see again, side by side, the two methods, there's a different approach. Here we simply look at all the forces acting on the whole system. There we look at the forces acting on each body in the system separately. We draw free body diagrams, and then we solve the equation simultaneously. Either way, you get the same answer. And that's how it works.